we wanna let you know that this is being recorded and we wanna share our disclaimer with you again. The information that we're providing this evening is for educational purposes only, and it's not intended to diagnose, prescribe, treat, cure, or replace the recommendation from your healthcare professional. So I'm hoping that, um, you know, you will learn a lot as we share, and we also want to hear from you as well. And what are we talking about this evening? Um, this evening, we have a very important topic that we want to look at. Um, it is something that we might not be thinking about, but it's something that is very important to the health of each and every one of us. And um, it is the thyroid. We are gonna look at the thyroid and mm -hmm. conditions that are associated with that little thing, the thyroid. Why do you have to call it that little thing? And that's what it is. It's 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 not something that's very big. It's not a very big <laughs> organ, you know. But it is. It has quite a lot of functions for our bodies. So, um, we are in for a treat this evening as well mm -hmm. because um, I don't want to go ahead of myself. Well, you can just. Here a little. <laughs> okay, we have someone this evening, a family actually, who will share with us mm -hmm. on, um, you see, as I said, the thyroid is responsible for so many different conditions, so many different organs and areas of the body. Mm -hmm. And um, there, are, there are other medical conditions that we can have when our thyroid is not working properly. Yeah. And we have someone who has she has experienced that mm -hmm. and she will share with us this evening yeah. and we look forward to hearing what she has to say and how she overcome the condition that she had mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so before we actually you know introduce them we just want to give you like a quick little background um on the thyroid so the thyroid is a two inch long butterfly organ right at the front of your neck so it's so isn't it a small little thing <laughs> two inch <laughs> it's just two, two inches inch long <laughs> two inches long but it's actually right here right and it actually controls your metabolism so it's a part of your endocrine system which makes chemicals called hormones that control different functions in the body so some of those functions are your metabolism, your breathing, your heart rate, your weight, your body mm -hmm. temperature. So, so many functions Here you go. Um, are affected by the thyroid. That's right. So the thyroid affects every cell in the body because all your cells have receptors for your thyroid hormones. Mm -hmm. Now there are two conditions or two like big classes of conditions where the thyroid can, you know, do something it's not supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So one of them is called hyperthyroidism. And this is when your thyroid is overactive, right? right? And so the way I remember that is like, just think about a hyperactive child. <laughs> <laughs> it just means phone. you have too much thyroid hormones, right? And some of the symptoms that we see with hyperthyroidism can be weight loss, anxiety, restlessness, irritability, heat intolerance, so a lot of sweating, shortness of breath, um, diarrhea, or just increased stool frequency. You can have irregular menstrual periods, muscle weakness, goiter, so many things, bulging eyes, so many things you can have when you have hyperthyroidism. And there's actually an autoimmune component mm -hmm. to that as well, where your immune system attacks the thyroid, and this is called Graves' disease. Mm -hmm. Now, quickly, if we look at the opposite side of that, you have hypothyroidism. And that means that your thyroid gland is underactive or you make less thyroid mm -hmm. hormones. So the way I remember that is hypo means low, oh. <laughs> low thyroid hormones, right? <laughs> hypo is low, hyperactive. That means you have a lot of thyroid hormones. So some of the <laughs> symptoms associated with hypothyroidism could be weight gain, cold intolerance, constipation, fatigue, irregular periods, 
depression. So just think of the body being low, like low mood, mm. you know, you feel slow, yeah. you have no energy. And they're kind of opposites, hypo and hyperthyroidism. You can also have low libido, brittle hair, dry scaly skin, muscle aches and weakness. So a lot of things, you know, can be caused by hypothyroidism. And again, the immune system in this context where you have low thyroid hormones, the immune system can again attack the thyroid gland and you can get something called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Mm. So the immune system can be involved in both these instances. There's also goiter you know, which can happen in both conditions where your thyroid gland really swells up, right? Mm -hmm. And it can affect your voice. So you might sound hoarse or you might get a cough. And, you know, it can be very disconcerting if, you know, your neck is really swollen, swollen you get yeah. very self-conscious about that. And you can also have nodules in the thyroid. So if you were to, you know, palpate or, or touch it, you could feel those nodules as well. So those are just a couple things we wanted to share with you just to give you an introduction um, as we as we you know get into our guest speakers this evening. Okay. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this evening our special guest is someone that I met shortly after I came to Canada. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I could all I could say we all met, <laughs> met the, <laughs> we all met the the family when mm -hmm. we came to Canada and we've remained friends yeah. ever since. Mm -hmm. So her name is Hazel. She's a biological mother of a pair of twins. Oh, I wanted to have twins. <laughs> <laughs> she has a pair of twins, um, mm -hmm. Jessica and Jordan. And she's also an adopted mother. So mm -hmm. she has adopted four siblings, yeah. Timia, Tyrese, <laughs> Tiana, and Tia. Wonderful children. You see, Hazel believes that, she believes and practices the words of the song, if I can help somebody mm -hmm. as I pass along, then my living shall not be in vain. Yeah. So Hazel and I were trained together as medical missionaries back in 2012. Mm -hmm. And we were also making certain lifestyle changes at the same time. Mm -hmm. I still remember the day she sent a WhatsApp message yeah. um, saying that she was at the doctor's office. And she said, I have all but, and I think it's either one or two symptoms of Graves disease. Mm -hmm. I still remember that, um, that message that she sent. At that time, I had no idea what mm -hmm. that was. Mm -hmm. So of course, you know, Google, Google is my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so I Googled it. <laughs> and um, I, you know, I found out some information on it mm -hmm. and, um, after all her tests were back, it was confirmed mm -hmm. that she had hyperthyroidism, mm -hmm. right? I, um, I want to take this opportunity this evening to introduce to you Hazel mm -hmm. and her oldest daughter, Jessica. So they will answer some of our questions, which we hope will enlighten mm -hmm. um, both you and us. Um, on the condition and also what to do when we have sickness. I just want to remind you just before Hazel um, comes on that it is only God that heals. And I want you to listen for that as we go through this, this, um, this session this evening. Mm -hmm. Hazel, welcome and welcome Jessica. <laughs> welcome to Health Talk. <laughs> good evening thank good you evening. thank you <laughs> thank you for agreeing to come and to share with us and mm -hmm. to tell us some more about this condition because um even when i was when i was back doing my course i had to do uh, a presentation mm -hmm. and be it was only because of my connection with Hazel yeah. and the condition. That's the, that's the topic I chose. Mm. So on one of the endocrine <laughs> system, conditions of the endocrine system, and that was the one I chose. Mm -hmm. So um, my first question to you, what symptoms were you experiencing that caused you to go to the doctor at that time 
Um, and when was this? How many years ago was this? Um, before we begin, we have a we created sort of, of a slideshow to help us to guide us. Okay. To, to share the screen. Okay, so you are now a co-host, so you can go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we took the questions that you that were, you sent us like, to guide us, and we kind of created just to allow us to remember most of the things because it's easy to forget when they're talking mm -hmm. especially that it's been it's been ongoing for so long um so we kind we kind of created a little slideshow to um the questions are all in the slideshow and we included pictures as well to kind of give persons a visual mm -hmm. because it's um it's been a journey and we're still on that journey so we just want to thank god for that so we'll What's a little prayer. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to share. We pray that you will speak through us and help that as we share, we ourselves will learn through your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And so um, Jessica is the one that's going to guide us. So introducing our family, um, this is on the on one side, you have Jessica and Jordan and myself. Those are my biological children. And on the other side, you have our adoptees. To me, uh, Tyrese, Tiana, and Tia. And that's a picture of me, what I used to look like, um, <laughs> praying to get back there one day, but by God's grace. Um, so, um, so the first question, and this is where we live. Um, during the, our testimony, we'll share um, why we live here and so on. So this is where we lived in 2016 when we first moved into the city, in the, that White House. And the other picture, the Brown House, is where we currently um, live right now. And so what symptoms were you experiencing? I'm sorry. So what symptoms were you experiencing that caused you to go to the doctor? So in, um, in 2018, um, I could even go back even further than that, but I didn't realize that it was connected back in 2014, 2015 to 2018. But in 2018, we went to um, the skills camp in Maida. And I've always had allergies, seasonal allergies for the longest time. And I came to Canada back in the 90s. And by, by 98 or so, I started having seasonal allergies, which was... Um, didn't understand it, but every spring I will suffer, every fall I will suffer. And so when I went to camp in 2018, I was doing the children's programs. I was out on the grass a lot, walking around and out in the sun a lot. And by the third day of camp, I couldn't do it anymore. So someone else had to take over because the allergies were just really bad. And I remember at the end of camp, we got a puppy from where we went to camp. Basil. And so um, I never had a dog before in Canada. So um, a few yeah. weeks later, I had, a, I had a, an eye infection. Mm -hmm. And it so was your allergies had gotten worse too. So everyone was thinking, oh, she's allergic to the dog. We yeah. have to give the dog away. And I was like, she's not <laughs> allergic to the dog. Yeah, we thought it was the dog. So I, I, um, I had an eye infection and it got really painful. So I went to the hospital, to the emergency room. And they treated the eye, they checked my blood pressure. It was normal, 120 over 80. Um, they gave me some antibiotics and eye drops and stuff and I went home. I didn't take the medication and I tried natural remedies. I remember um, I did it at our church. Um, Sister Jeannie gave me a, a charcoal poultice for my eye. That really helped and everything was fine and went away. Mm -hmm. and right after that, I started having, I started feeling weak and tired and my hands started sh shaking. I was having tremors wow. and I couldn't understand what was going on, but I kept, kept going up, going, we kept going along. 
Jessica did most of the driving anyways. So it wasn't, it wasn't hard for me to step back and say, okay, I really can't drive because my hand is shaking so much easier to drive. So she just took over more driving. Well, I didn't drive on the highway. <laughs> so I would still do that. Or we would take the back roads now coming yeah, from Toronto. We went to Toronto. So anyways, um, I started having weakness and, and just the shaking. But what was what what took me to the emergency room was that I was losing weight so quickly. Every morning I went on the scale, I was losing a pound and I was like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. So once I realized that in the house, the first house I showed you, the White House had two sets of stairs. So climbing the stairs was very difficult. And I realized something is wrong. I'm mm-hmm. too weak. I can hardly go up and down the stairs. I keep using the bathroom so often and I have to go up the stairs to use the bathroom because I was so particular using my own bathroom. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> I couldn't do it anymore. And I said, I have to go to the emergency room. And you weren't sleeping either. And I was, I was having insomnia and mm-hmm. I wasn't sleeping. And so Jessica drove me to the emergency room. And after about five hours there with all the testing and everything that was going on, mm-hmm. she said, I have Graves' disease. Because mm-hmm. they did all the blood work and everything. They did it really fast because it was, it was just the weight loss was so dramatic. I think I'd lost maybe 10 pounds in like 10 days. And so the mm-hmm. weight loss was really dramatic. And so mm-hmm. and my blood pressure was super high. It was like 180 something, wow. 90. And a month earlier, it was normal. Right. Mm-hmm. So that they, they thought it was really strange. And so they did the blood work. They kept me there until they got all the blood results. Yeah. Night. And then I got discharged about 10 o'clock or so that night. So um, someone came pick me up from the hospital because the kids were already in bed to just go put and leave them. Mm-hmm. And so that's what um that's what I was experiencing when I went to the doctor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So how how did you feel now after you you were diagnosed? Uh, once I um, got the results, I, I I was familiar with Graves' disease because I had a, a, my cousin was diagnosed with Graves' disease as well. So mm-hmm. she had the bulging eyes. And I also had the bulging eyes too, which was pretty strange. But I, my, I thought it was related to the, the infection that I had. Right. Yeah. Had, um, yeah, yeah this is the picture, picture of my eyes there. Right. Mm-hmm. As well. But she had... Graves disease. I remember that in Toronto a few years before she had that and she had fixed it. Her eyes became normal again because she had her thyroid removed. Oh. And so I felt so relieved to know that it's something that can be fixed. It's mm-hmm. nothing that's mm-hmm. like a death because at one point I thought I had cancer. Mm-hmm. And so I felt relieved once that was done. Mm-hmm. And I always remember um sister dad telling me that whenever i have an issue with health go to the doctor and let them tell me what it is because then you know what mm-hmm. to fix because yeah. if you never know what it is you mm-hmm. don't know what to fix right so that's why associating the cause is um comes into play with the diagnosis the doctors tell you what it is and then now you can see what's causing this and what can i do to fix it so i always remember because i was not a doctor person as i said in 2015 i had some gut issues and I believe I had leaky gut, yeah. also autoimmune related. And I stopped eating wheat because every time I ate bread, I would have cramps and go to the bathroom so often. Mm-hmm. And then I went on to Google. I didn't go to the doctor. I went on to Google and I researched it all. <laughs> and then I tried everything that Google said. And they worked because within a year, I was able to mm-hmm. eat bread again with no problems. Wow. But I didn't fix the problem mm-hmm. because... I was still, I still developed the, um, the autoimmune issues later on, but um, going to the doctor, the doctors are there for a reason mm-hmm. and um, we need to use them, mm-hmm. for them to help us right. to diagnose the problem Then we could ascertain the cause after we That's right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So since you mentioned um, the laws or the cause and the sickness prior mm-hmm. to being sick, were you then obeying the laws of health? And if not, which one? Um, I would say as a good seventh adventist, I was obeying the laws of health <laughs> based on how I understood, yeah, I understood the, them. Yeah, to the best of our understanding. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I, I was obeying the laws of health because um, I was eating right on a vegan plant-based diet for many years since yeah. 2004. Mm-hmm. I mean, vegetarian from 2004, fully plant-based from 2012. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I exercise in the winter time. <laughs> I mean, no, 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 sorry. I exercise in the summertime. Okay. <laughs> so, like I said, we ate a healthy meal, right? Mm-hmm. But we didn't know anything about food combination, right? So, mm-hmm. I guess we weren't doing the nutrition part. Mm-hmm. I was exercising in the summertime, but I wasn't going outside in the winter time. So, I guess I wasn't really exercising. <laughs> um, water, I drank a lot of water. I drank a lot of water. And I even had days when I would write down every hour I'm drinking a glass of water. But that's the wrong way to drink water. So I wasn't really following that one, right? <laughs> um, sunshine. In the summertime, lots of it. Yeah. Wintertime, none. Yeah. And I didn't take any supplements. Really I didn't supplement. do the vitamin D3. So I wasn't really keeping that one. Mm-hmm. Um, temperance, we did everything we could do. We, yeah. what, we, what we weren't supposed to do, we didn't do them. But what we could do, we mm-hmm. overdid yeah. some of <laughs> <laughs> right? And then for air, you could not tell me to keep my windows open at night, especially during the winter time. I would, that was like, you can't do that. I'm not safe, right? <laughs> so we thought we had fresh air by going outside. But once we came inside, we had all the dead, stale air inside and we never opened our windows until mm-hmm. now, right? Yeah. Um, for rest, um, we kept the Sabbath. <laughs> yeah, we went to bed really yeah. late. And yeah. I was guilty of that one. And everybody, all my friends know that I'm a late night night person because once the kids go to bed at 7, 7.30, then my life has just just begun. (laughs) And it it couldn't be done from 7.30 to 9.30. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Possible. (laughs) But today we could do it. Right. So it's like we could have done it before. And then we never had like a scheduled bedtime. It was just kind of like I have these tasks to do. And And whenever they're done, I'm going to bed. Yes. And And then trusting God, trusting the trusting God, we read our Bibles, we studied, but we I had, but I didn't realize that having these fears, especially the fear of flying and fear of keeping my windows open at night and fear Mm -hmm. of the dark and other things, I didn't realize that that I wasn't truly trusting God when I had all those existing fears. So Mm -hmm. in part and parcel, I wasn't keeping the laws of health Mm -hmm. and, but God knew that I was trying, but but God allowed this Mm -hmm. to bring me closer to him and to show me that there's still more. And not because I feel I'm doing them now, I'm doing it right. I'm still learning each and every day. It's progressive. Mm -hmm. So we're always learning a little bit. We just got to be faithful with what we know and then we'll learn more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how did the children take the diagnosis? <laughs> um, it's, it's really hard to answer that question. We were pondering that a lot this week. How do the children take the, the um, it, they, because of their situation and what the trauma that they've been through, um, any change shows itself in them individually in different ways in their mm-hmm. behavior, especially in the behavior and the nighttime sleeping you'll find they might have nightmares more or may not be able to sleep well yeah. or they might be more whiny and fussy and cranky and crying but we we had many discussions about um, me getting sick and me going away and going away going away happened early up in the in during the illness so that was one way for them to understand that things are different. Right. And then other things too, like um, like putting them to bed um, and picking them up because they were smaller then. So they like to, the younger two always like to be carried everywhere and picked up. And, and I couldn't care. I couldn't right. carry because I was too weak. Right. right. And all their needs met, like their laundry, all those things. So like things started to slow down. So I think they could see like physically, like things were changing. Yes. And when they came to me, I would send them to Jessica because I couldn't do certain things. And then because my illness was physical, because I was diagnosed with Gray's eye disease and also with multi-nodular goit- goiter. Mm-hmm. I had lots of nodules, yeah. um, but praise God, they were not, cal- there was no cal- calcification, so they were not cancerous in any way, mm-hmm. and, uh, but they can see, they can see, and yeah. they, and their children who don't really have a filter, so they look at me and like, you look so weird, <laughs> you look so ugly, you look so different, uh-huh. and so, but I, ex- I could understand that, I could expect that because I know their older siblings and they're just exactly the same. So I expected, expected that from them, but I wasn't, mm-hmm. yes. I wasn't um, 
yeah so yeah we just had like open discussions about it and mom would just explain it to them and yeah. stories and they could yeah. like even like look at google images and see like other people with the eye thing so like mm-hmm. it was true that mom really had graves disease but like yeah just yeah. discuss it openly i think so yeah. what about we prayed a lot about it so they would hear it in our prayers and and so on so they kind of got them to understand and then you know they know a lot about health because mm-hmm. we um we always they always do health lectures at home with mm-hmm. the house, so they present on different aspects of the eight laws of health yeah and because of the exposure in the church and with going to different places doing seminars they're very much exposed to that so they understand that so mm-hmm. once they saw the changes they started turning in their head like what's going on especially the older the older two mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so what what were your treatment options so my treatment option included um, iodine, iodine or radioactive, radioactive iodine, iodine surgery, and f- first and foremost, medication. And mm-hmm. so I put a couple of quotations here in regards to how I feel about medication. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'll read them, sorry. <laughs> if the... Uh, blocking the screen sorry um so if the harmonious working of the system has become unbalanced by overwork overeating or other irregularities do not endeavor to adjust the difficulties by adding a burden of poisonous medicines and that's ministry of healing page 235 paragraph one and drugs never cure disease they only change its form and location when drugs are introduced into the system for a time they seem to have a beneficial effect a change may take place, but the disease is not cured. It will manifest itself in some other form. The disease which the drug was given to cure may disappear, but only to reappear in a new form, such as skin diseases, ulcers, painful disease joints, and sometimes in a more dangerous and deadly form. Nature keeps struggling, and the patient suffers with different ailments until there is a sudden breaking down in her efforts and death follows. Yes, so... Um, I actually didn't even know that Spirit of Prophet says all this about drugs, but I'd always had this um, mindset that I don't take drugs. Mm. And that was, I probably heard about these during the medical training that was in 2012, 2013. Mm-hmm. Prior to that, I remember taking Motrin or Tylenol, allergy, medi- allergy, medicine. allergy medication. I remember, mm-hmm. as I said, I was always a late nighter. And before I got the health message, when I was going to bed and it's past midnight, I'll be like, I'll have a headache tomorrow morning. So I might as well take the motion tonight if I go to bed. <laughs> I'll take the motion if I went to bed, just in case. But then once I learned about the health message from 2012, 2013, I stopped taking pain medication. I would drink water if I had pain and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. And then I decided no medication. Mm-hmm. And so... What did your doctor say? My doctor said... Um, if you don't take the medication because your blood pressure is so high um, and you have this rapid heartbeat, if you don't take the medication, you can have a stroke or you can have a heart attack. Mm. And in my mind, sitting on the hospital bed while I was waiting for him to, um, to release me, I said, God is not going to allow that. Mm. God is not going to allow that. And I said, I'm not taking the medication, but I didn't tell him that. I just, in my mind, I'm not taking the medication. I took the prescription. I've always taken the prescription when they gave it to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I take it home. I remember even sending Jessica the, the prescription and she would Google it and see what the side effects are. And always, it's always bad. And so yeah. why would I want to go down that road and take medication that's going to cause that, that for me, right? And so I didn't take the medication. I went to, I was sent to a specialist, an internal medicine doctor and who's still my doctor today. And she spoke to me, very, very, very nice doctor. We always have a really nice conversation when we talk. And so I explained to her my faith, what I believe and what my plans were. Mm -hmm. And she said, okay, we'll try it for a little bit and see what happens. So I said, three months and we'll see what happens. Three months, went back, not much change. (laughs) She said, so are you ready? I said, three more months and then we'll see what happens. (laughs) But after the first six months, we started seeing changes. And so she didn't press me that much anymore with the medication Mm -hmm. because she started seeing changes. And I'll tell you what those changes are. If we go to the next next slide. 
um, we started researching natural remedies. So there's a quotation before that, you don't have to read the quotation, but I can just explain, it says natural remedies take time. They don't just work overnight, they take time. Okay. And so we started researching what we can do naturally. Mm -hmm. And that was initially, that was not like the six months or so after that was initially started researching what we can do. And so we have health books, we have foods that heal, we have a few other health books, um, health power, we started reading them up, we started working on Google. YouTube and videos. yes, and one of the good things was that when my eyes were so swollen, I couldn't read. Mm -hmm. So I started listening to Ellen White, um, Ellen White books on my phone. Mm -hmm. And the nights when I couldn't sleep, I'd lie on the couch and I listened and I started listening to councils on diet and health. And I started learning so much. And I said, I didn't know these were all in these books. And so I started learning what we needed to do and how we needed to live. I read um, um, Ministry of Healing. And when I read that, I said, wow, I thought it was all about health, but the first part of it talks about the life of Jesus and his work. And mm -hmm. so I had learned so much. And I think God allowed me this opportunity to learn more about him because he knew that I needed to draw closer to him. Yeah. So we, started, we started researching natural remedies. We started using our, our books that we had. And then we called up, we had a medical missionary at our church um, in Mena. And so we called him up and we had an appointment with him. He came by, he sat down, we went through the protocol. Cause once I, once I got the diagnosis, I let him know what it was. And so he created a plan mm -hmm. for me. And so we went through the whole entire plan that day. Yeah. And he had on him that day, vitamin D drops. And I started using it right away, the mm -hmm. therapeutic dosage, which was 30,000 30, IUs per day. And mm -hmm. I started using that right away. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so once that was done, I did a water fast, a three-day water fast. Mm -hmm. And Jessica did it with me. <laughs> <laughs> so she's shaking her head. <laughs> it, was, it was a very hard thing to do. Mm -hmm. water fast, especially when you have small children yeah. in the daytime, it's really difficult. Mm -hmm. I know I didn't drink a lot of water as much as I should because at the end, at the, on day four, I was outside with the children and then I felt my head got really light and I'm like, I got to go inside. And I managed, I don't know how I did it, but I managed to get inside on the couch and mm -hmm. I was stripping myself all the way up towards the couch, going to get up everything. So that was just so hot. I was, and I, um, and I, when I laid down, like I almost, I thought I passed it. Jessica wasn't at home. It was just the children outside. So I told him, bring me a glass of water, quick, bring me a glass of water. And I mm -hmm. drank that. And I realized I was suffering from dehydration. Mm -hmm. Because in that three-day water fast, I wasn't drinking enough water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, but despite that, the three-day water fast really helped me because I remember having shoulder pain that went away, never came back ever since then. Because before that, Jessica would have to help me put my shirt on sometimes because my shoulder would be in such wow. pain. Mm -hmm. I think that's really well the fast. Nothing. I've never had that ever. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus, for that one. Mm -hmm. Then in my in our research, we also, when the medical missionary came to my house and he saw, um, he experienced a few hours in our home and he said, you have to get out of this house and take a break. <laughs> <laughs> he, says, he says, you have four busy bees in this house. Mm -hmm. They're beautiful children, but very busy. You need to get away for a break. Mm -hmm. But once he said that, they're not his friends anymore because they don't want me to leave. <laughs> <laughs> and so we started researching and we found Bayside Natural Health Center in New Brunswick that does detox programs. Mm -hmm. so I registered with them and I went out there to New Brunswick in February of 2019. Yeah, it was like fast, like three weeks. Yeah, like, I, was I was gonna wait until later on, like March or so, because I had registered maybe a week before or two weeks before. Mm -hmm. And I was gonna wait and then Jessica said, why wait, why not do it right now? Yeah. <laughs> and so I decided to go and, and I, I had a fear of flying, as I said, I didn't wanna fly. So I decided to take the train <laughs> and it was 20 something hours on the train. Wow. It was, it was kind of relaxing going there for a few, uh, it was hard because I had to switch trains in Montreal and it was kind of hard. I know, you're alone. And I was alone. I was so weak, I could hardly carry anything, but God helped me. Mm -hmm. And I got the time to spend that quiet time also reading and really focusing on, on my spiritual life. Mm -hmm. And while I was at the, 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 the detox center, 
there was morning and evening devotions and most persons there were non-Adventists or half of the persons there, or most persons were non-Adventists there, there were about 12 of us. And I, I had also that time to spend quiet time walking outside because we had to go outside every day for walking exercise yeah and I had that time the quiet time and before I was ready to leave there I think maybe three days before that I wish I could change my ticket and fly home the fear of flying has just totally gone wow. <laughs> that was unbelievable totally unbelievable but God is so good when you really get to know him and you start mm-hmm. seeing God in a different light yeah as like a close friend Mm -hmm. you can talk to it -hmm. takes away a lot of the stress and the strain and the things in your mind that you thought you couldn't do you could Mm -hmm. do them in god in god's name you can do them Mm -hmm. and so that was a blessing and Mm -hmm. so once i came back from the from that i remember there was an anointing at church with pastor i don't remember when that was I think, yeah, I don't remember either. But, but I was anointed at church yeah. and that was also a blessing mm-hmm. yeah. um, as well. Yeah, and so when mom came back, um, she came back with a whole list of things that she needed to do, a lot of changes. Um, so I went shopping and got like all the things. So I did a Toronto, yeah. yeah. Toronto run, got like Corella, spirulina. Um, I think she'll talk a little bit more about the supplements and got like garlanes. And then um, lastly, um, the medical missionary gave us a book Mm-hmm. by natural healing to the laws of health we Never bought a book we bought we bought two books from him <laughs> okay the yeah. juicing book and the the re, reverse reverse 365 yeah book. yeah yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh-huh. and it yes. like had like stuff about food combinations and prior like before my mom left we had stayed up late one night like on the computer like trying to understand food combinations and it was not making any sense <laughs> So we were, we're like lord if you want us to do this then please make it clear because this is not clear at all so yeah. we'll just yeah. leave this right here and then um and then we had the book and then decided to finally decided to open it and read it and i had like so much stuff on like food combinations mm-hmm. i remember i really prayed to like understand the information and i sat down and i read the book and it just felt like it made so much sense yeah i couldn't explain it though <laughs> <laughs> and I started, like following the recipes mm-hmm. and like at first in my mind I'm like this is like the food is not going to taste good it's going to taste so random like how could you make something and not put like for example like onion and garlic with tomato or something like fruits and vegetables that go together but everyone like no one really noticed either and a lot of our friends and family that had comments too like I would still make it I wouldn't tell them and they were like <laughs> it's so good so I mean God bless definitely yeah. like definitely yeah yeah and so because of my overcoming of the fear of flying we're able to book a trip to go back home which i had not done that in 20 years i've never been back (laughs) since 94 (laughs) just because i didn't like i I was so afraid of flying Mm -hmm. and because even when i was thinking of flying to new brunswick i thought if i fly to new brunswick i'm gonna hard attack on the way there i won't live to reach there (laughs) why it was just that bad and so Mm -hmm. We were able to book a trip to go there. And we'll just show you some pictures of when we were there. Just go back that one, but you can see the difference in my in my facial mm-hmm. formation. You want to call it yeah. that? Please? Your features. Yes. <laughs> and this is a picture of us. We When we were there, God opened up the way for us to do some health lectures, sharing my testimony and mm-hmm. also sharing um, what we do in our, in our, in our health walk. Mm-hmm. While we... When we did that, they asked us to do a presentation on cancer. So that, that was the Sabbath. We did a presentation on cancer. And yeah. just had made lunch along with um, a friend of mine, Moran. They made lunch for the entire group who came. Mm-hmm. It turned out to be that there were all the health ministries leaders from all the different churches all over the island. Mm-hmm. And they went through that session and then they would take it back to their churches to share. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. As well. okay. And on the other side, on the right side, that's my home church they once they heard that we did that they asked us to do an AI presentation so we did a we did a, a new start health presentation with them as well sharing mm-hmm. a testimony with them. okay this is the kid singing at another church we went to mm-hmm. a lady who came to the session on, on one of the smaller islands Beckway she heard them sing and so she asked them to sing after children's story at that church we went to another Sabbath mm-hmm. we were there in Tibet for six weeks and so mm-hmm. we traveled around quite a bit during those six weeks Visiting friends, getting uh, out in the fresh air. Getting some vitamin D. The real, <laughs> real vitamin D. <laughs> picture of my mom and myself and my 
my two nieces flew down as well from Toronto to join us down there for two weeks. So that was good. Yeah. My old classmate mm -hmm. and my sister, sister and my nephew, also another picture. So being there, because when I was at when I was at natural at Bayside, natural, um, the natural Bayside Natural Health Center, one of the things that the doctor really told me, the naturopathic doctor told me that I was under a lot of stress. I needed to really de-stress. Mm -hmm. so going to St. Vincent was one of the opportunities that I had to de-stress, not to be worried about the bills and everything else here. Mm -hmm. Just a different environment. It was a, yeah. it was very relaxing. Yeah. out there and always be in the open the doors are open windows open all day and at night if we went for the mosquitoes we'll have them open too but it's just, <laughs> it's just so beautiful yeah. and it's just so fresh and clean that it made such a difference in my mm -hmm. healing because before when I arrived there persons were like the people didn't really say a lot to me because they were just afraid. They, they couldn't recognize her. <laughs> nobody, yeah. nobody knew who I was. Yeah. So a lot of times people thought I was her. Yeah. So it was just kind of like, I don't know. <laughs> it's, that's my mom. Yeah. That's who you yeah. know. But, but, but a week or so before I left, we started to say, wow, you started to look like yourself again. So mm -hmm. I think you started changing yeah. before I left there, right? Okay, so we're going to go a little faster now. How did life change for you, Jessica, <laughs> and Hazel as well? Um, we have um, just about 15 minutes left, so. Okay, so you can go ahead and. Okay, so how did life change for us? So I think my mom talked a little bit about like not being able to see or read. So um, that I did a lot of her writing, filling in forms, um, mm -hmm. kind of handled all those I things. Write hand, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> the driving, that was so scary because of course I never drove that much before, but I had to learn really quick. <laughs> that was really um, faithful to me. I know during this time, faithful to all of us, but to me, like he really helped me like learn how to do so many things that I just never thought I could do, or I was mm -hmm. never really interested in doing um, before. And God has an interesting way of all the things I said I never would do, I ended up doing. So God is so good. Driving, cooking, doing all the regular tasks um, and so many different things. And during that time, we also, um, I guess, experienced homelessness for a little bit of time. And um, a church sister took us in for a couple of weeks until we could get everything together. Um, mm -hmm. God opened the way for us to move to where we live now. Um, mm -hmm. That's a whole another testimony in itself. And of course, <laughs> spiritually, I think we grew a whole lot. Um, yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's good. So, yeah. is there anything that you would do differently? Uh -huh. Um. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Jessica just loves with these. Um, <laughs> but the thing I would do differently. Um, I would say. You want to get this? Or should I? It's at you the go end. ahead. Okay. So I would say um no. <laughs> what I wanna um experience all of this over again no. no but of course knowing what i know now of course i think i would have done things differently like way before um this yeah. new, um, experience right um, but just looking back now i think we went through some really um tough times mm -hmm. <laughs> and also some like really good times but a lot of tough times and god um trials are god's workmen right so mm -hmm. um he'll use them to like refine our characters i learned a lot about myself the good and the like really bad things yeah, that i've yeah. changed that of course inner strength will allow us to change but i personally wouldn't change it so mm -hmm. just okay. exactly it. and i feel the same way too i wouldn't I wouldn't change it because I believe that God is totally in control of my life. Mm -hmm. Would I want to live it again? No, mm -hmm. I would not want to live through that any, again. And I won't wish that for anyone to go through that. Mm -hmm. right? But Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace yes. and not of evil to give you an expected end. Mm -hmm. And I know that God has a plan for my life. Mm -hmm. And as Jessica said, Spirit of Prophecy says, trials are God's workmen. Yeah. What allows the trials to build us up so that we can be good witnesses for him. And so right. I thank God for the trial that we endure and for the challenges that we're still facing today. Mm -hmm. and so we pray that he will continue to use us to yeah. help others as we go through this Christian walk, which is what we are here for. Right? Oh, okay. So what was your, the, the, the one you had on the screen, your diet? Um, I know you mentioned some changes that you made to your diet. Yeah. So um, quickly, we made we changed with food combination. We started eating simpler and not mixing fruits and vegetables together. 
and not having too many variety of food on our plate. We started simplifying things. Um, we start, instead of going for the vegetarian byproducts in the store, we started eating beans and yeah, yeah. And it's simple. more like natural. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're yes. steamed, baked, etc. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then once I came back from the health center in New Brunswick, we started going, trying organic as best as we could. Or probably even before that, we started organic. So if mm -hmm. we if we can't find it organic, we find the the best. I guess grade. The best grade. Or so quality. we'll go to like say Love Lords or something and buy a better grade instead of going to like food basic or so where yeah. they go for the lower. So we try to our best to eat organic and we best can. Is we can. do the best that we can. Yes. We can, yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, food preparation. We start we've learned now how to cook our grains, bake them beforehand with, with the phytic acid and and so on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Our eating times, we try to eat at the same time. Still working twice on that. <laughs> twice per day yeah which is praise god that god has helped us to get this far we're eating twice a day because it's very difficult for some people to go to two meals mm -hmm. um, person say they're so hungry i have a, a client i'm working with right now in the city and she says it's hard with three mm -hmm. meals mm -hmm. because it's not in between and i i laughed and i said it is hard but you're getting there slowly but surely yeah. mm -hmm. and so drinking water mm -hmm. we now drink our two, three glasses in the morning, warm with lemon water, and then put it that we sip instead mm -hmm. of guzzling down the yeah. water. Yeah. You're using supplements. I was opposed to supplements. I never liked supplements. I always thought supplements were like medication. I'm not doing supplements. Yeah. And now I realize that with the quality of the food that we're getting today, supplements yeah. are actually good to yeah. give mm -hmm. us extra nutrients and vitamins and minerals that we're missing yeah. from our food. Mm -hmm. And so we do supplements. Of the children as well, D. vitamin D and a few other things we mm -hmm. do. I started doing the leaky gut, sealing the leaky gut, mm -hmm. the probiotic and so on. Yeah. Okay. And um, we do a lot of gardening. So we grow our own food. And mm -hmm. so we use that to um, supplement our food. We still do canning. So we'll get fruits and vegetables and stuff in the fall and we'll can them to take us through the winter. And we yeah. know that God will bless those. And so we freeze things and can things and, and dry, things. And dry, and dry, dry things, things as well and we okay. use all that for our, for our meals mm -hmm. okay and um what's the how do you feel now how is it now with you um like physically yes. spiritually mentally for both of you um Spiritually, my I have I've seen amazing. Um, it's just amazing. I just love the, I love the word amazing, and I know people always say I love the word amazing. That's our ministry, <laughs> amazing impressions. But um, as an example, just to make it short, as an example, I started studying the Desire of Ages from January, mm -hmm. my devotionals in the morning, and you wouldn't believe that I read that book a few times before. Mm -hmm. yeah. Master Guides and also for ECM we were doing that book for a Bible prayer meeting on, on Tuesday night the whole book mm -hmm. now that I'm reading that book I have it's like I'm learning so much more and not only that I'm learning I'm able to put it more into perspective in yeah. my life and retain information more mm -hmm. so in terms of my health I can remember things things now yeah. not, as, not as best as before but I'm, it's, it's getting better mm -hmm. okay. um, Socially, I'm not as standoffish as I was before. <laughs> and everybody knows that about me. I don't like talking on the phone. You can call me, but I won't call you. <laughs> I don't like getting in touch with people. Uh, my phone will ring and I won't answer it. But I'm getting better at that. Praise God. Right? <laughs> and, um, <laughs> physically, I can run up the stairs. Uh -huh. yeah. I can run up the stairs. Work I can work in the garden. Uh -huh. So we'll borrow. I can carry yeah. compost. Like it's, it's just my health has improved. Mm -hmm. and I'm not fully. I wouldn't say I'm a hundred percent because I still have some extra blessings that I need to share with others who don't have it. But um, there are ways. There are ways that I'm active now that I hadn't been active like that even before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got sick, mm -hmm. right? And so I praise God for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now for the, um, the Jessica, do you have anything to share? <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes. Um, I think for me, for, 
Um, I right now I'm feeling really good too. I think I think the best I felt in a very long time. Mm-hmm. Um, I just I know I can't really get into like lots of details, but I just say like um, through this whole like experience, I think the course of my life has definitely changed. Mm-hmm. It, it was totally not what I expected it to be. Mm-hmm. But I think like at the end of it, like looking back, like I definitely can like trust um, my life and my heart with God because he knows me so much better than myself and this yeah. experience like I've learned so many things like all the household things like when I was younger I would say I'm never ever ever doing any of those things but like <laughs> it's so funny because like I really enjoy doing them now <laughs> like, it's never caught me doing those things before but like I really enjoy like doing all these things now so I'm like really like excited like mm-hmm. really content like I have like you know that piece of puzzle understanding you can't explain it you just mm-hmm. have it so I'm definitely excited um, for what's ahead. Like, as, you know, continue to learn about God, like he, again, like kind of shows us like who we are, who, who he designed and created us to be. So I'm just excited for whatever God has coming up. So, mm-hmm. so you're cooking and you're sewing. If you see the picture on the screen, <laughs> she made that dress. So she's yeah. really enjoying what she's doing. Yes. And yeah. um, I know that you've started a, a, a family ministry. So mm-hmm. in two minutes, tell us a little bit about your family ministry. Our ministry is called Amazing Impressions. Mm-hmm. Uh, the website is amazingimpressionshealth.com. Okay. And so we started this ministry a while ago. We started our ministry. We had It was called Deeply Rooted, but then we already had the business registered as Amazing Impressions. So instead of creating a whole new business account with the province, we decided to just stick with that name. Mm-hmm. And we have a bra- we have branches. So a rain in fine linen. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Deeply rooted farm and flowers. That's yeah. our nice. wow. farm. And we have amazing impressions health where we share what God has done for us. Mm-hmm. With lots of health and mm-hmm. some blessings to help someone else so that they yeah. can get to enjoy health because we believe that your health is your wealth mm-hmm, so that's yeah. what we want to share and the children are a part of the ministry as well mm-hmm. so just to, they wanted to sing so we thought why not do youtube since they love youtube so much so we have a youtube channel for children for them so they sing <laughs> cooking videos and so on we have a few that we haven't fully edited yet to put on the website but their part of the ministry is singing mm-hmm. and uh, doing the youtube health video and cooking and health talks and so on and piano, we have a gifted child in the house who can get on the piano and any song you sing, she can play wow. any song at all. Whether it's a chorus or a song, you just, you just <laughs> sound something and she can play it and she's never learned to play the piano <laughs> outside the home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a blessing. And so we're, we're trying to, to form that into something that we can use also, also to praise God. Mm-hmm. Right. they get older like depending on like their gifts and talents and that all will just be a part of the ministry like how we just serve others right yes yeah. yes yeah. And they enjoy working for the lord just one one thing that they we started doing um we when we have worship in the morning every child also has to do their personal devotion before you come to worship and they wake up in the morning mm-hmm. and so we've they've, they've been going on for a few years now and so we wanted to add a dynamic to it. So we said, if you can study a, a brand new Bible verse every morning, and then when you come to evening worship, you say that Bible verse, you get a special treat for breakfast the next morning. <laughs> <laughs> and would you believe it's been about a month or a month and a half now we've been doing that? There's no more special treats. <laughs> and, we're not special treats anymore. and they're still memorizing a verse every morning. Yeah, that's oh, right. Right. In order to remember the verse in the evening, you must be saying it in your head all through yeah, the day. All day. Yeah. And keep your mind on Christ. Better yeah. behavior. Better behavior. Yeah. And, but, <laughs> but they have outsmarted us. They look in the Bible for the shortest time. <laughs> and that's the one they memorize. Each day, but, it's <laughs> that's the Bible. <laughs> but they're learning mm-hmm. the word of God. Yes. And yes. so we want to harness all these character traits in them and mm-hmm. share them on our website with our ministry to help others, not just adults, because there are children that need to know that Jesus loves them as well. So that's our ministry. Okay. Very good. Thank you so much, mm-hmm. Hazel, for helping us and Jessica for sharing with us. I see that we have two questions. Um, let me see if we have time for them. Oh, and there are long questions too. Has the goiter reduced significantly subsequently to starting a okay, healthier okay. diet? So and- what 
I mean, it is a long question and we're really short for time. So Christine, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take your question. If it relates to Hazel, we'll send it to Hazel and have Hazel um, respond to your question. Okay, but we only have four minutes left and we really wanna ensure that we answer your question correctly and with enough time. Um, so again, Hazel and Jessica, thank you so, thank much, you so much for sharing with us. We really, really appreciate it. And, you know, um, it's not always easy going through something, no. but it's so good to have a supportive family, yes. a supportive church yes. family. Mm -hmm. And um, we're so thankful also for your ministry. And we can't wait to see and hear, you know, what you what you share with us through your yeah. sewing and gardening and mm -hmm. all of that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Amen. And and Amen. hats off to Jessica. Hats off to Jessica. Um, oh, not many, Lord, for his not grace. many <laughs> children your age would would you know having gone to university would choose to stay home and help your mom at a time when she really really needed you. Mm -hmm. Hats off to you, my dear. And she has a she has an interview that she did with Sister Lorna on YouTube as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From prepping to go to med school to being at home helping yeah. her. Family. Yes. So yeah. Anybody wanna if anybody knows Sister Lorna Jared, they can check out her um her YouTube channel and the interview is there as well. Okay. 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 All right. So and uh, Donisha is gonna share her screen. Um I think you can see her screen now. So we just want to remind you this is our last opportunity to remind you about the diabetes boot camp that is coming up it starts this coming sunday mm -hmm. at 7 p.m yes and it will there are seven sessions sunday monday tuesday thursday and then the following week sunday monday tuesday so if you are diabetic a pre-diabetic mm -hmm. or it runs in your family yeah and you think, you know, you might get it one day or you just want to learn information mm -hmm. is knowledge. It's power when you are, in, when you are informed, yeah. then we invite you to register, come and learn about it. Um, we can guarantee you that you will not regret that you've been a part of it. Um, there is a registration package that you'll get. There is a, a resource package as well. Mm -hmm. You know, we look at some menu for di diabetics recipes. Yeah. We will also look at, um, you know, we don't want to just give you some recipes. We want mm -hmm. you to be able to make these recipes yeah. by just think, make your own cookbook if you, if you will. So again, we want you to join us, not to miss out on this opportunity. Mm -hmm. And um, the you can go to our website, yeah. which is drdnaturalhealth.com. Mm -hmm. And under mm -hmm. the training tab, you will see the um, register now information right there. Yeah. And um, having registered, we can assure you that you will start your journey to better health. All mm -hmm. right. So, and then um, the information as well is placed on Facebook mm -hmm. and um, next Thursday, yes, next Thursday, we do have our regular health talk. So mm -hmm. we invite you to come join us next Thursday for our regular health talk session. And um, then we will just do our closing and say a prayer and we thank you we thank you so much especially those who join us every week we are grateful that you join us each week that you are with us mm -hmm. and um are a part of our program yeah so oh, and uh, you is it is it drdnaturalhealth.com yes yes okay yes and you right, can thanks. share this information. You're welcome. You can share this information with your friend as well and your friends, and um, they will also be able to get the information that is there. I think Donisha is putting the information in the chat. So you can just click on it. Um, that's where you would go to register. Again, we thank you and we look forward to seeing you. Even if you are not necessarily diabetic, you can still join, as I said, information 
is mm -hmm. knowledge. All right. So this is Rosetta. I'm Donisha. And we want to remind you to start your, your journey, journey towards, towards better, better health today. today. See you next week. Let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this opportunity. And we ask, Lord, that as we separate one from another, that you will be with us and you will bless us tonight with a good night's rest. In Jesus' name we pray. Mm. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you. Have a good You're evening. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Jesse. Hi, Tiana. <laughs>